I'ma crush it. Welcome to Unsung. I'm Anthony Walker. This is a special episode where we share stories from some of the people that we met in wrapping our third season. We hope you find them as interesting as we did. First up is Richard. He's faced blindness that potentially could have hindered his career skills. However, he's not only overcome that, but is also in the process of helping others. How it started is I went in for a glaucoma procedure to release my pressure. That went perfectly fine, and I came home. And I, of all things, I sat down and I blew my nose, and it hemorrhaged my eye. It filled with blood that detached my retina all at the same time. And I ended up losing my sight, and I didn't know it wasn't going to come back for three months later until they determined that my retina was totally detached. And for about half, I was here for about four months, and at the end of my four months here, I joined a Highmark group for a grant for um, job preparedness. And there was about four or five people in there, and it basically turned into be a computer user group. So after the grant was over in February, I continued the group and took it on, and we created a computer user group. Now that has about 10 or 12 people. Access technology, it's computer, more or less computer usage for the blind. For instance, getting your email, they teach you that you can put your printed letter from your mail on your flatbed scanner. The computer will turn it into text and it will actually turn it into speech and read to you what's on that piece of paper. Um, they teach you how to use an iPhone. For a blind person, the iPhone has something that's called voiceover where it actually talks to you. So I can use an iPhone just as a normal person, a normal sighted person would and do the same things with it. Back, speaking rate, heading. Bullet double tap to activate to select voiceover speaks items on the screen. Plus now, after I went through the training at BVRS and started the computer group, I also volunteer here on the off weeks of the user group. So I come every Thursday, and on the Thursdays we don't have a user group meeting. I volunteer and update the computers and help Tracy and Orton Spiro with anything they need computer-wise, doing all the updates and installing some software. David thought about taking the easy route with his education. Something inside him made him rise to the challenge. I have a story. I quit. David was finished with the Neighborhood Academy. That was it. He had had enough of the hard work and accountability. This summer he made the decision he was not going back to TNA. Rather, he would return to public school. He had friends there, and life would be so much easier. After returning to public school, David realized perhaps public school had not changed, but he had. He needed to get back to the neighborhood academy. David begged the headmaster Tom, please take me back. David faced an ultimatum. Are you in or out? We are not a revolving door, said Reverend Tom. David committed to working hard. He was in. He has faced his share of setbacks along the way, a hard decision to repeat 10th grade, and a basketball knee injury that resulted in surgery and sent him homebound, studying under heavy medication. Yes, David has had an uphill battle. Despite this myriad of challenges, David's tenacity and guidance from the Neighborhood Academy would pay off. In the spring of 2012, David took the SATs and scored in the thousands. He was within reach of a governor's scholarship, now, college was not just something people talked about for him. He realized it was actually going to happen. Not really thinking he could get into college before, he had told staff he planned to be a chef when he grew up. Now he realized that he could go to college. He shared his true aspirations. I've wanted to be an accountant since I was in the 10th grade. David has since graduated from the Neighborhood Academy and is thriving in his freshman year at Clarion University. David's journey has not been an easy one. Many turns could have placed him on a different path, but due to the support of caring staff and the structure of the Neighborhood Academy, David is succeeding. No matter what your struggle, know that there are people out there that will help you. We traveled to Genesis House in Bellevue for this next story. It all started with the um, Roe versus Wade, and when all that, uh, the abortion issue was, was into play, and... Um, Three women decided that, you know, where they needed, if a girl was pregnant, what kind of help was available to her. It was an eye-opener for me because I, I thought that working at the Genesis House, it was really just a place for the girls to, to live, to lay their head up at night, but it's really not. We help them work on daily living skills. Uh, we also provide them with many resources for finding housing, 
for finding jobs, uh, education. When we started out with three women and a hotline that um, had five clients maybe a month, maybe, um, to what we do now, it's we work with over 6,000 um, young women and men and their families a year. I, I fail to even say that we also have a, a very large center down in Washington. Genesis has been working with me and placing my baby for adoption and counseling me so I know that I'm making the right decision and finding a good family that is unable to conceive children of their own. In the two months I've been at Genesis, I've already completed outpatient treatment for drug and alcohol. I did a job readiness program, and I just recently was placed in a job. I started volunteering for Genesis about 15 years ago and immediately totally believed in the mission, felt um, that they were really doing a lot of great things for the community and also for um, families and children. I want to mention about our Learn to Earn program and that is done in our learning center. And there's all the series of programs that are um, available down there. Again, like I said, the, the Lamaze classes, the, um, the newborn baby classes, um, if they take all of these classes and finish, finish them, they get baby bucks. Every class they, uh, they come, they, they earn baby bucks. And with these baby bucks, they can earn, if they take all the programs, they can get a new, brand new crib, brand new mattress, and a brand new car seat. And so that's what we call the learn to earn. And um, basically anything else left over, they can, they can get um, our slightly used um, items that we have at the center. So everything we do is, is trying to make that young woman become the best she can possibly be, that she can be the best parent that she can possibly be. So I feel that now with the board and the direction that we're going, we're trying to prepare Genesis for the future to make sure that it is sustainable and continues to be able to serve uh, pregnant women, children, and adoptive families from this point on. If you would like to volunteer with Genesis and, and give back, you can reach us at our Genesis House telephone number, 412-766-2693. We also have a website, www.genesispgh. And you can contact our community outreach coordinator, and she will be able to help you. You don't always hear this kind of story, and it's hard for someone overcoming addiction to share what they have gone through. Here's a brave story of struggle. I, I maintained a job for 17 years at the Pittsburgh Public School Police. You know what I mean? I, did, I wasn't um, a junkie under the bridge. You know, I was your next door neighbor that you had no idea. And that's how life is. But my whole world has crashed down since then. So, because I lost my job in 2011. Because I was in possession of heroin in a school, in uniform. Which is awful because those kids have, I grew so close with my kids at work. They were like my own children. How long have you been clean for now, Callie? Uh, last time I used, I have been clean since October 18th. 2013? Yes, 2013. Mm -hmm. When you have no drive or motivation, which I came from a very, I was very driven. Growing up as a kid, I was very driven. I was very, you know, I went to IUP on a full scholarship to play softball. I was going to try it for the Olympics, everything. I was very driven, and I lost it somewhere. And ever since then, I have had no drive. Methadone is awful. It's the devil's drug. Um, I didn't like it. I just really wanted to be clean. But I'm dealing with a lot of mental health issues that I didn't. I mean, I've always known I've had them, but there's been such a stigma with mental health issues in my family that I was never allowed to share like what I was feeling at that point and why it was going on. So it's always been in the dark for me. Small Seeds has three different programs, but the program I work for, the Family Group Decision Making Program, is a 90-day totally voluntary program. And what we do is um, basically partner with families to help them receive the services that they need. If you need help, ask. 
that's what I was taught, and I never did that before, and I did this time, and they have helped me out a lot. Like, my electricity was shut off. They helped me pay the bill. Not all of it, because I had to come some money. And then from there, they come and they visit me, like, every week. Um, pulled resources from the community. We work with families to connect them to other family members, their friends, their neighbors, um, people who are just the supportive people in their lives because we know that the agencies aren't going to be in people's lives forever, but um, it's the people around them that are going to be their supportive services. I need to do what's best for me now and it, this program has always, like, since I got involved with this program, they've done nothing but supported me. So I consider them my family now more than anything because that's how they treat me, like I'm their family, not caseworker, KC, not CYF person, core person, that's not how they treat me. And I respect that, I respect that a lot. And respect goes a long way with me and it, I just need their help. We hope you've enjoyed this special edition of Unsung. Help us tell more of these and other stories in 2014 by supporting Unsung at SorgatronMedia.com. I've been your host, Anthony Walker. So I said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car.